our morning snoop around homes under the hammer in 45 minutes on BBC One after a bricklayer and his family dream of building a new life down under. Moving halfway around the world to find work and a better future is a big gamble, especially if you run the risk of being worse off than you were at home. Back in 2010, that was the choice facing the Cliff family. Today, we'll find out if they made the right one. Jimmy Cliff had found it impossible to get work as a bricklayer, leaving his family close to financial ruin. Money-wise, in the UK, had been a massive struggle. I, uh, I was out of work for the best part of a year. But wife Nicola wouldn't be going anywhere if the sums didn't add up. For you when you come home, though. We certainly will. Their messages reminded them of what moving would really mean. And for one member of the family, the thought of leaving was just too much. Come here, bud. Seeing their son so upset took Nicola and Jimmy aback. I'm a little bit surprised that he's. he's getting so emotional. It's quite upsetting to see, to be honest. It makes me feel slightly guilty that he's feeling like this, but I, I do think he would adapt and I do think he'd be OK if we chose to come out here. I think leaving your life behind, basically, and starting again would be the hardest decision anyone would have to make. You know, I think it's just the initial saying goodbyes and leaving certain people behind that are the issues more than all? It is the hardest choice we've ever had to make. As a family, as individual people, it's, it would drag your family to the other side of the world. is isn't really an easy choice to make. The Cliff family were about to make a decision that could change their lives forever. Would Australia really provide them with a better life they were looking for? This, to be fair, is the dream. It's um, beautiful here. Uh, the kids are loving every second of it. There is a fear of making the wrong decision, but that's life in general. There's no guarantees. It's just where your heart takes you, I suppose. But Nicola was far from convinced that they could afford it. It's a terrifying thought to think that We'd be stuck on the other side of the world, not being able to potentially feed the children and get them the basic things that they need. It's no good having a beach and the sea if you can't provide food on the table. Australia has a lot to offer, but the UK has my life. And the last 30 years I've been there, and I don't think you can ever really imagine leaving it behind and and just not having everyone and everything you knew. The week in Australia had been a real challenge and had given them the opportunity to discover the pros and cons of a life-changing move. But would Australia provide them with all they were looking for? It was time to decide. It's been a really hard week. We've had a lot of highs and lows. The lifestyle here in, in Australia is incredible, but unfortunately it does come with a price. So our final decision is... Australia! Australia. Connor, Reese and Ethan still hadn't been convinced. I would have chosen um, Australia. It's just seen all the emotions that families had and it's made me change my idea. Despite the emotional costs, Nicola agreed that the family's future lay in Australia. I do think it's the best thing for everyone. If we can work a way around the money, there is a lot of places in Australia, so maybe we have to look a bit wider field, but I do think we can make it work. I'm glad we're on the same page. Makes a nice change. <laughs> One year later, did the reality work out? 
It did. The cliffs have set up home on the Gold Coast. After initially staying in surfer's paradise with Jimmy's brother Jack, the Cliff family finally moved into their own rented property one month later. They live in a three-bedroom house in a gated complex in Rabina, an hour's drive from Brisbane, complete with shared pool, gym and barbecue area. Although the family seemed to be settled, it has been far from an easy journey. When I first come here, I was near enough guaranteed work with my brother. Um, unfortunately, two weeks before we were due to fly out, the firm where he works laid off quite a few guys and position for me basically became unavailable. I did the, did the same as what you would do at home, on the internet, looking through newspapers, sending off as many applications as I possibly could. I mean, I'd hoped to stay at home with the children and not have to rush out and get a job. And then I did my CV up, started firing that out. And unfortunately, that received as little success as Jimmy's was for a while. It's just so upsetting. Yeah, knowing you, you, we must have sent off hundreds of CVs and applications and just not to hear anything. We honestly thought we'd just fail before we started, really. And that's the impression we both got, I think, mm. that we just couldn't do anything and the money wasn't going to last that long. It has been a bit harder than I thought, I'll be realistic. No matter, you, you can say things are going to be hard until you're actually going through them, you don't realise how hard they can be. However, for Jimmy, while working part-time as a delivery driver, he got the opportunity to apply for a job he was a bit more familiar with. Luckily for me, through one of the customers that we did a delivery for, they um, got me in touch with a scaffold company. That's when things picked up for us, really. I was starting to cover the rent, cover us food shopping. Um, <laughs> was about it. That was about yeah, That <laughs> was about it. But then you'd also then, around that same time, you got your temp job, didn't you? Um, so we had a bit of money spare that way. And then recently, two weeks ago, I left the scaffold company and I'm now working with my brother doing solar panels. So, after the initial setbacks, are the cliffs on steadier ground? We've got most of the basics covered. You know, the bank accounts, the, the rentals. The kids are in school and enjoying it. They're doing well. You know, all the teachers have said that they're thriving. You wouldn't know. We'd just not move state, let alone move country. And Jimmy is finally seeing the benefits of working in the sunshine. He's got a job with his brother Jack, learning the ropes of installing solar panels as an electrician's labourer, but there's no special treatment. Well, at the moment, because my brother's still relatively new to the solar, he's, he's picking up real quick. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of expect to do 12 hour days. We set off at five o'clock in the morning. It's better rare we get home before five, but that's through choice. We could just do one job if you wanted, but. We're earning good money at the moment, so we might as well enjoy it whilst it lasts. This is ideal, doing this for a living at the moment. Um, working with my baby brother, it's nice to actually work alongside him for a change instead of just seeing him the odd weekend. But there is one drawback. Working Saturdays is obviously a bit of a disappointment. Who wants to work a Saturday if you, if you can help it? But on the other side, the money's better, um, and at the end of the day, if we want to be able to make it a permanent feature staying here in Australia, then I need to get as much money as I possibly can to get me started, so it's all good. As long as he doesn't ask me to work Sundays as well, then we should be all right. Nicola has been enjoying getting out of the house too, working as a finance officer. I now work for a dental company. It's been really nice to, to stop the, the isolated feelings um, being at work. Being around people, you know, I do work on the phones all day anyway, so I'm talking to a lot of different people who will give you their opinions of Australia and where you're at. And they hear my accent straight away, they know I'm not local, and that kicks off a conversation of something else. And I got offered a permanent job last week, so, you know, I was temping there for originally six weeks. That dragged out a little bit longer. And yeah, so now I've got the permanent job. 
So with a job for Nicola and Jimmy's work going well, the decision to leave is starting to look like the right one. We were at breaking point when we left the UK. So it's a lot more financially secure for us. Jimmy was barely working in the UK. We were struggling most of the time to pay the mortgage. At least here we have the option of moving again, so we could probably find something a little bit cheaper if we had to. But for now, we're fine, and I can't see he's moving from here for a while. I think if you come over to Australia thinking it's all going to be a piece of cake, you're going to be very disappointed, you're going to be very upset, and you're probably going to want to fly home within the next six weeks. Um, you have to look at it as being back in England, really. If work's hard in England, it's hard to find work everywhere else as well. If you play it safe and say six months to find work and have money to support you for that period of time, I think you've got more chance of making it work. One of the big draws for moving to Australia was the outdoor lifestyle. It was something the Cliff family weren't able to enjoy back in Leeds. I'm definitely confident in my decision, or our decision, to, um, to move out here as a family. The lifestyle in general is a lot more of a healthier lifestyle. Um, instead of kids being cooped up, stuck indoors all the time, you know, coming to the beach or going for a swim in the pool, there's always something for kids to do. Doesn't cost you a fortune. I mean, just going surfing at well, nearly five o'clock on an evening <laughs> in nearly winter, you know, it's you can't really ask for much more. And what do the boys make of their new lives? I'm having fun in Australia because I like surfing. Should we go to the beach a lot more and it's warmer? The boys have changed dramatically since we got out here. Um, they are just so independent. They are changing their accent slightly. Mm -hmm. They're just confident. Just in general, when you go to parks and things, the kids will be playing, and before you know it, they're talking to loads of other kids, chasing each other around. Just the way that they do, put themselves forward, you know, they make the presence known, and they seem to get accepted into groups quite quick. Having extended family in Australia who've been through it before has helped the Cliffs understand their own experiences. And the family is extending further with the arrival of Jack's new baby. Having Jimmy's brother around with us really helped settle the boys in to start with. It was just a face that they knew because we knew Axel was on the way. Um, they were getting excited for him to come along and, and get to see him. And now they enjoy it if we get to babysit as well. So. They have fun when he comes around to play. I think they've had it tough. I think most people who, who leave everything behind in England to, to start a fresh other side of the world, it's always going to be tough, but I guess it's up to you how you deal with it. And I think they've done they've had it hard, but I think they've done really well so far, and hopefully they're going to stick around and, and stay out here. I know down the track when the little fella gets a little bit older, he'll be able to appreciate having his cousins <laughs> and his family around. Um, although he is going to miss the family back in England, but you know, hopefully one day they'll come too and we can have his happy family in Australia. But being closer to one side of the family has meant leaving another back in the UK. It's a choice that's still tough for the Cliffs to live with. I've been up and down as to whether or not I thought this was the right thing or we made the biggest mistake ever. My family means everything and always will. Um, the way of sort of coping with it is, I strongly believe my family will come out here at some point. It's just a matter of when. Leaving your family behind, giving up everything you've got, you know, it's, it's scary to think about. Not really any major regrets, I wouldn't say. Maybe leaving my nana behind. I think if it did happen and I didn't see her again, I would regret moving away then. But my nana wouldn't have wanted me to put our lives on hold for the sake of her. Anyway, if she could understand what's taken place with us all, I think she'd be really proud of us. After everything the Cliffs have been through to get here, what do they see for the future? The plan for the next seven or eight months or so is probably just try to save up as much money as we can, see how work goes and, and what happens with the way things are at the moment, and 
maybe a year or so down the line if things are looking good then maybe see about investing in buying a property somewhere. The Cliff family took a huge risk to try a new life on the other side of the world. They face similar challenges both in the UK and Australia. So after all the heartache, would they recommend it? There was a lot of finding our feet and struggling and have we done the right thing, haven't we? But once the kids got in school, once we started to find work, it's all just fallen into place now. I'd like to think, you know, a lot of people could attempt to do these things and, and realise, you know, there is a lot more to the world than just staying at home and relying on your own securities all the time. It's, it's nice to actually take a gamble and live your lives, really. It's definitely easier to have a harder life here in Australia than it is to have a hard life in Leeds. <laughs> It's been a long time coming, but the Cliff family are finally in Australia and settling into their new lives. While there's still plenty of hard work ahead, the dream they risked everything for is a lot closer. For back home, will a huge seaside property in Margate or a Wimbledon flat get the bidders going on Homes Under the Hammer next on BBC One, followed at 11 by Close Calls on Camera. Thank you.